try one more time. Let's see. When a blood vessel is cut, the body must react quickly to stop the flow of blood. Immediately after an injury, smooth muscle fibers in the wall of the blood vessel spasm. This constricts the blood vessel and slows the flow of blood. Although the response is only temporary, it gives other hemostatic mechanisms time to activate. The break in the blood vessel exposes collagen fibers, creating a rough spot on the vessel's normally slick interior. This rough spot triggers changes in passing platelets, transforming them into sticky platelets. The sticky platelets accumulate at the site of the injury, forming a platelet plug. The platelets also secrete several chemicals. Some cause the vessel to constrict further, whereas others attract even more platelets. The platelet plug forms a temporary seal in the vessel wall. A more stable solution requires the formation of a clot. Blood clotting, or coagulation, involves a complex series of chemical reactions using proteins called clotting factors. The exact sequence of events used to form a clot varies, depending on whether the clotting process has been stimulated by factors inside or outside the blood. When areas outside or extrinsic to the blood, such as the damaged blood vessel or surrounding tissues, release clotting factors, a cascade of events called the extrinsic pathway begins. When factors within the blood itself, such as the platelets as they adhere to the collagen in the damaged vessel wall, activate the clotting factors, a cascade of events called the intrinsic pathway begins. The extrinsic pathway activates blood clotting factor X in single reactions. The intrinsic pathway requires four different reactions to activate factor X. Either way, once factor X is activated, the formation of a blood clot follows a common pathway. After factor X is activated, an enzyme called prothrombin activator is produced. Prothrombin activator acts on a globulin called prothrombin factor two, converting it to the enzyme thrombin. Thrombin transforms the soluble plasma protein fibrinogen into fine threads of insoluble fibrin. The sticky fibrin threads form a web at the site of the injury, creating a clot of fibrin, blood cells, and platelets. A blood clot can effectively seal breaks in a smaller vessel. However, blood clotting alone may not stop a hemorrhage from a large blood vessel. Okay, so in this, what I call a clotting cascade, that's how it was uh, taught to me when I was in school, but it's called an intrinsic or extrinsic process or pathway. In this, there are things that have to come in to actually move to the next step. You have to have calcium. So if you don't have calcium, you're not going to clot. You have to have potassium. If you don't have potassium, you're not going to clot. So there's some important things that you don't normally think about that are going to help produce a clot. Um, the medication Coumadin. You may have family members that are on Coumadin. Coumadin actually uh, blocks cal or potassium from coming in here. So that's how it works. So if you have a patient that's on Coumadin and they're bleeding a bunch and we need them to stop from bleeding, what would we give them? What would we flood them with? We just give them potassium. Potatoes. Calcium as well. Um, so another one that happens is, um, oh, what was I going to get at? Oh, uh, platelets themselves. They're, the characteristic of platelet is that they're sticky. You know, they get triggered and they become very sticky. So have you heard of like aspirin? Um, being a blood thinner. They'll say aspirin's a blood thinner. It doesn't actually thin the volume of blood. What aspirin does is it makes these guys not become sticky. So it prevents them from being sticky to each other. And that's all aspirin does. Doesn't it cause like high blood pressure? No, you take it because you have high blood pressure. If you have high blood pressure, you're at risk for clots. If you have high blood pressure, you're at risk of an intrinsic break. So your vessel's just breaking because of the pressure. And your dad does what? He takes like a lot of ibuprofen for the headaches. Yeah, because he's got high blood pressure. They told him to stop taking ibuprofen. Yeah, 
It's not he needs to take aspirin because he's got high blood pressure, but he needs to get the blood pressure down. That's his big thing. Okay, so once we produce a clot, as you know, you see on the outside of the skin as a scab, then you're going to have to start getting rid of it. So as the platelets have conjugated there, they start to pull those edges together and closer and closer and closer. So they contract, and then fibrolysis is meaning your white blood cells, your immune system is going to come here and start breaking up that clot that was there because we don't need it anymore. Bleeding has stopped, the tissue underneath it has repaired, and so it'll come in and clean up the mess. Uh, smooth endothelium, so inside, oh, what keeps us from clotting? So we want clots if we have breaks, but if you don't have any breaks, we definitely don't want clots. Because then again, we'll have strokes and heart attacks. We don't want that. Or you'll lose legs. We don't want that. So inside the blood vessel, inside here, again, smooth. And it's called endothelium because it's inside. But it's still epithelial tissue. But it's inside. So endothelium is nice and smooth. Inside the heart, when we start looking at it, it's really smooth and slippery. Should be. We don't want blood clotting. Blood flow, maintaining blood flow, it moving constantly, not stagnating like a creek. If it was shut off, it starts to stagnate and not move. It starts to get nasty looking. We want blood to do the same thing. We want it to keep moving, be nice and fresh, no clotting. Uh, we have natural anticoagulants. What are anticoagulants? What does that mean? What does coagulation mean? Clotting. Clotting. Coagulation is clotting, so anti would be no clotting. So we have natural heparin inside our blood that's released to keep our blood from clotting. And then you can get things like aspirin will keep you from, it's an anticoagulant. Heparin, um, Lovenox, those things are anticoagulants will keep you from clotting that may be prescribed for you to take. Uh, what was the very first step when we get a break in a vessel? What, did, what happens? The very first thing. Vascular yeah, that vascular spasm is, is the first thing that will happen. And then we'll get a platelet plug. Then we'll form a thrombus and then a fibrin will come in there. Or, hang on, sorry. Fibrin comes in there, creates a thrombus. A thrombus is a clot. That's the end result. Okay, let's pick up, let me look and see how many slides I've got left. Because, yeah, we probably need to pick this up tomorrow because this gets kind of hairy. We'll talk about blood types tomorrow. So after we do our blood, white blood cells, we'll do blood types.